Okay. So, uh, hi again for those of you that were here earlier. So, in, in the last talk, we were, we were just looking at really flash conceptually in a data center. Uh, and, and I hinted at the fact that you could, um, you could do much more with flash if, if we were writing to it natively um, in terms of uh, we can turn that flash into a cache device or keep it as a, as a more generic block device. Um, but we can, also, uh, we can also layer software uh, on flash when we don't have SSD protocols in the way uh, and, and start doing some interesting things. And so one of these uh, products that, that we sell is one called ION, so a data accelerator. And, and very simply what this allows us to do is to take commodity servers um, for many of our OEMs, so HP, Dell, IBM, and so on, and then uh, layer ION as a software layer on top of that. Uh, inside that server, you'd, you'd have um, a number of our flash modules. And basically what happens then is you can take that commodity device and turn it into a shared storage appliance. Um, in other words, you, you, you share flash to those applications and, and operating systems that require it uh, without having to go down the, the, the incumbent uh, legacy storage vendor route um, that, we, that we see in, in, in more classic SAN, ex SAN examples. So there's a little bit of a history here, a little more about fusion uh, than I talked about first, and then uh, we'll look at some of the problems again that we, we, we saw in the first lecture, but um, let, let's, uh, let's have a look at that. So here we have... Um, Fusion as a company, it's kind of worth qualifying ourselves, if you like. So we, you know, we've been around for a while, since 2006, and um, uh, we were just, uh, came around with, with two people, really, a gentleman called David Flynn and a gentleman called Rick White. And the idea was that um, it was recognized that disks were just not performing um, in HPC environments, and so something had to be done. And, and Flash um, had been around for a while, you know, since, since the early 80s, but it was, it was costing a lot of money. Um, to do anything with, but those price points, because of the, the consumer impact, were, were starting to drop. So the idea was, well, let's, let's use Flash, uh, but, but let's use Flash uh, in the purest way possible. In other words, let's not, let's not go down the easy route, the simplistic route, which is SSD. Let, let's write to Flash natively with a virtualized file system uh, and reap the true rewards that can be, that can be gained from Flash. And, and part of that process um, was where we started, in essence, down in 2008. Um, so it was very important to us to, to get as many OEMs on board as possible, and that has continued um, throughout the last few years. And um, you can see that uh, you know, the success of the company has, has been quite, uh, quite remarkable insofar as we're seen as a flash, uh, leading flash vendor um, globally. And um, we have a, you know, a number of customers and OEMs that would, would back that up. And uh, so far, so good. So... I did discuss this last time, and so, so quickly, um, looking at it again, the, 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 what are we looking at? The, the problem is, is basically CPUs. CPUs being under, underutilized. Um, if you have a CPU that's not able to turn uh, I.O. into data quickly enough, then uh, not only is it a waste of money for you in terms of the, the, the capex cost of the CPU, but it's going to affect your bottom line. You're not, um, you're not turning that data into information. So that's always been the way. You know, you can, because of these disks, you know, the, the rotation on spinning disk, um, just to remind ourselves, good for capacity, not so much for performance. So we had to try and get around it. And, and the easiest thing to do was to, was to throw disk at it to get more spindles, um, hence uh, you know, storage systems as well. Uh, along, you know, we had capacity coming along as well, uh, often wasted these days uh, at the expense of, uh, of, because of the need for IOPS, sorry. We could add more memory, uh, more servers, humans to optimize the apps, and all of which uh, gives you a fairly small return rate for, for what is a lot of uh, investment, and uh, not ideal. So, you know, at the same time, part of the problem is that the CPUs uh, and memory have, have increased uh, manifold in capability. So disks simply haven't kept up. And so you have this, this, this widening gap, a performance gap, uh, as a result. And the idea is to let's, let's catch up. You know, disks will not do it. The only other medium that's uh, appropriate is, is, is solid state. And uh, if, we, if we use that appropriately, then we can reap the benefits. So this is um, slightly more technical, but it gives you an idea of, of, of why we see some of the performance problems that we do. Um, here, we just, uh, we, in essence, we see the, the server on the left, and we have a storage network in the middle there, a fiber channel, for example. And then on the right-hand side, you see a storage system. So in, in days gone by, when there were disks in there, um, this problem was, it was even worse. But this example is showing, is showing NAND flash, in other words, SSDs in, in, in SAN storage. But, but look at all the hops you've got. You know, if you want to 
feed I.O. to that CPU, you want to do it as quickly as possible, as many as possible, uh, with the lowest latency. Uh, and in this instance, we've got a number of uh, protocol hops to consider. Uh, you, know, you have to go over a network adapter, then over a fiber channel network, back into an adapter. You know, you're going from 8 to 10-bit encoding there. Uh, you then got the onboard uh, storage processing to take place in the storage system, RAID controllers, back-end loops, potentially SATA interfaces, and so on. All of this um, has to be traversed before we can acknowledge an I.O. Uh, or you know, retrieve an I.O. And so that's basically, while well, this is happening, um, the CPU is, is idle. It's not processing I.O. And as a result, um, performance is, is bombing. So not ideal. And that, that's the situation in, in shared storage environments that we, that we all face at the moment. So if you have flash at the end, the only thing you're really getting rid of is latency associated with seek time uh, in random environments and so on. Um, so you will see some improvement, but uh, using SSDs in this environment exasperates a number of uh, challenges with flash that uh, ultimately uh, you know, it, it becomes an ill-conceived idea. So you can do if you want to, and this is a slightly different form of architecture. You do see people saying, well, I know what, why don't we um, place an SSD in a server? We could place an SSD even on a PCI slot in a server. But what, what's happening here is that key word is still an SSD. Uh, in other words, it has um, SATA controllers and so on and, and RAID controllers, which are not ideal uh, in front of it. So you know, we're, we're removing the middleman, but you're still compromising flash as a whole. And, uh, You'll see some vendors sort of trick you into saying, yeah, it's, a, it's PCIe solid state. So you think, oh, okay, so it's native, native flash. When in fact, if there's batteries on there, RAID controllers on there and so on, it's nothing more than an SSD just put into a PCI slot. Okay, so the, the, the bottleneck becoming the RAID controller there. It's a bit like sucking you know, a pint of beer through a straw. It's, it, it, it's, it's that, it hobbles uh, performance that much and introduces uh, a number of reliability issues. So... Yeah, no great surprise here, <laughs> but the idea is let's put that flash in the server itself. Um, if we can put the NAND flash in the server, write to it natively, take our data, place that data on the server, we can get IOPS uh, at a far greater rate you know, um, per slot to, to, the, to the application uh, at the lowest latency um, available. So 15 microseconds is an example, you know, an order of magnitude quicker than disks that are going to be running in you know, multiple milliseconds mode. So that's what we want to see. It's a simpler architecture. Now, there are some considerations in terms of moving that data away from a SAN and a shared environment, and hence this, this, this talk now. So here's just an example of, 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 of our Generation 2 I.O. drives. Uh, 1.2 terabytes at the top there, uh, 2.4 terabytes in the lower slot. The, the 3.2 terabyte cards uh, that I was referring to before are not, are not shown here. But you can see the form factor, um, you know, full height, half length, or half, light, half height, half length. And the nice thing about these is, in terms of scalability, um, what we're looking at in a server is, is simply the number of, of slots. Uh, we, we qualify the servers that we install into at the enterprise environment, in, in enterprise environments, um, to, to make sure we, we, we're compliant in terms of cooling and power and so on. Um, but you know, to, to, to power one of these is the equivalent of two fiber channel drives running a year, so they're, they're, you know, they're low power. And um, cooling-wise, um, you know, the majority of our service, of service through our OEMs are, are, quite, are quite capable of cooling these. Um, but the nice thing here is, is one of scalability. So it's, it's capacity per slot and performance per slot that will scale linearly in a linear fashion, uh, which introduces uh, predictability as well. We can actually go to 10 terabytes per slot uh, if we choose to using the Octal, IO Drive Octal. Um, that's a, that's a full-length, full-height unit, and so there are considerations in the, num in the types of servers we can use there, but uh, clearly from a capacity point of view, you know, 10 terabytes per slot, um, if, uh, if you take into account uh, most applications, uh, um, database applications and so on, is well beyond the size of uh, the average database. So from a capacity point of view, uh, not an issue. We see less of this now, but um, there are different types of, of flash, as I was uh, suggesting earlier. We can architect it differently, but there's also fundamentally two types. So that's MLC and uh, SLC. Uh, without worrying it too, too much, uh, MLC is higher capacity. So you get more density uh, per slot. Uh, it's slightly cheaper, uh, but doesn't perform, um, by default, doesn't perform quite as well as SLC and um, doesn't, isn't architected to last as long as SLC, single layer cell. Uh, so one bit per cell, um, if you like, in, in, in that NAND structure. Um, it's faster performing and will last a lot longer, but uh, it's guaranteed error-free from the factory, and it's, so it's a lot more expensive. 
So we're actually in the enviable situation that our NAND, uh, our MLC flash, we can architect to be almost as fast as SLC, um, which brings significant cost savings in uh, to, to the end user. But we have both options. Uh, if we have massively high write environments, then SLC may, may be appropriate. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, the longevity of NAND has to be managed. Uh, the more you write to it, the quick uh, uh, to, to, to flash over time, it'll, it will degrade. And so we want to reduce the write penalty to, to flash as much as possible. And that involves managing it appropriately at a number of levels. Um, and so we often see people that don't understand that using SLC, uh, which means lower capacity, uh, higher costs to, to the end user and so on. Um, the trick, because the density argument is to, is to use MLC uh, effectively. And you just can't do it in an SSD environment. You have to do this natively. So one of the, the observations we had, if you like, uh, understandably, and the questions I've already had this afternoon uh, over, at the, over at the stand is, you know, how do you share that storage? You, you're taking that, 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 um, that flash and you're putting it inside a server. You're taking it away from the shared storage environment. So how do you replicate? How, how do you do all this? Um, and the answer is fairly straightforward. Um, the, you know, applications and operating systems replicate. Yeah, we're not t necessarily tied into a storage system. Okay. Um, it's not only a more eloquent solution, um, it's going to usually be faster uh, and cost a lot less because you're not paying for, for, for mirroring technology, if you like, if it's already built into to, to the app. But there are those applications that, that would still tend to prefer to, to be shared. Uh, you know, SQL 20, 2008, sorry, as an example. Um, so we recognize this need um, and thought, OK, so what can we do about it? So we're using software to define how we use our Flash. And the idea was that uh, we use ION. And by doing that, we can take uh, any commodity server, so, you know, say a ten dollars or $12,000 um, HP DL380, for example, uh, put a number of cards in there, up to 20 terabytes, um, fiber channel, layer our driver, um, our VSL driver, and, and the ION software on there. And suddenly that, that system then becomes a shared storage uh, appliance that interestingly can become uh, repurposed later on in life as well. So it's, you know, you're not buying into long-term incumbent storage. Um, always worth noting. So you know, what we're trying to say here is, is, is move the boundaries. We're saying look, you, you don't have to buy the large legacy storage arrays that are going to cost a fortune to run, but will not deliver the performance, we'll certainly deliver the capacity. Um, but you don't have to get stung for the licensing, the, the running, the, you know, the CapEx, the OpEx, so on and so forth. Um, why don't we go to, to a more open cost model? that's not only cheaper, but gives you the choice um, of what you do with that uh, hardware long term. Because if you decide to repurpose the storage, i.e. our cards and the server, then you just do that. It is that simple. You take the cards out, put them elsewhere, you take the server out and put it elsewhere and job done. So you're not having to pay for service, you know, services, so on and so forth, over, over a long time. And you have the choice. You know, your, your preferred um, OEM vendor hopefully is, is on there, but um, there are others that are coming online as well. So this is not designed to be a storage system. I think that's important to, to point out. It's designed to be a simple flash-based shared storage appliance. Um, so we're acknowledging that the storage system, is, the spinning storage system, um, can't cope with the performance requirements that we need. We're taking that uh, application and its associated data out of the storage system and placing it in, in this environment um, separately, which ironically, if you do that, of course, you, you're reducing contention on the storage system. So you'll actually not only complement the storage system, but you'll find the performance should on that storage system improve as well because you're taking away, in theory, the application that's causing the most uh, contention on those drives, uh, or, or indeed applications. So it, it's straightforward. You know, an, an open hardware platform, you have uh, I memory cards, you need a, a driver for those, and then the ION software on, on top of that. Um, in terms of the cost of that software, you're talking about $3,500. So it's not crazy money. It's, in fact, really quite cheap. Um, very simple GUI interface that allows us to provision that storage. So from our point of view, um, we're not, not actually running our cards at full speed because we have the fiber channel um, or the iSCSI bridge to cross as, as well. But we are, um, you know, it, it's the best you can get if you have to share. So people say, well, what can you do with it? Because it's not a storage system. You know, it's, not a, it's not a Clarion. And it's not, you know, that's fine. It's not designed to be. <laughs> so you know, we, can, we can take the cards. You can carve them up. You can use it as a J-board. You can run uh, parity or mirror-based RAID. We're not going to use, sorry, take that completely back. Uh, we're not going to use, um, you know, we're not going to stripe, sorry, or, or mirror. Sorry, 
Let me start again. We're not going to parity our, our rate because that uh, introduces more write penalty to flash, and we don't want to do that. So we will, uh, you know, we'll use rate, rate zero, and we'll, we'll mirror if, if we so want to as well. We can control this over CLI, so it gives you that functionality. Uh, the configuration is, is straightforward. You know, any of you could do this in about 10 minutes. You just you, you carve up the available storage, and then you uh, assign it to the hosts that you choose to. Um, really couldn't be that, that simple. And because this is all defined by storage, as we introduce more plugins, such as dedupe and so on, it's just an upgrade path. You know, and it's, well, yeah, it's nominal in terms of cost. It just gives you an, under, an idea of the underlying architecture. Um, so you have, like I said before, uh, server, our cards, VSL. Our VSL is a 64-bit driver, so it's our driver interface to, to the cards. And on top of that, we layer um, ION itself that, that, that turns that server ION being its own operating system, uh, turns that server into, into that shared storage device. So we're still in, a, in an enterprise environment, um, and we need to be conscious of that. These cards from day one were, were architected to, to, to be resilient in, in, in the enterprise. So to give you an example where you know, we, we, we can test out an SSD in, in a few minutes and, and kill it, uh, we can overwrite our cards five times a day for five years before we consider that our protection algorithms will start um, Noticing that the card is wearing out, uh, we, we have, um, you know, we've had cards in with, with with Facebook, for example, that have repurposed them, and their current use rates was fairly high. They're predicting another hundred years of, of life cycle onto that flash, uh, current use. So you know, it, it's it, it just, it's fact like that, that that SSD just can't can't come anywhere near. Um, we also, you know, we're conscious that flash cells and uh, dies will fail, so we have flashback, which you know, in very simple terms, is a bit like having a hot spare environment. It allows us to proactively. Um, repair, if possible, flash, or if not, migrate that data elsewhere. And of course, because there's no spinning media involved, you're not actually going to notice uh, any performance degradation. Um, but the management software will tell you, um, you know, not only petabytes written to flash, um, but how much of the safety buffer pool is left, um, so on and so forth as well. Uh, I've explained this to you verbally, but it's just a, a diagram showing how, how the um, Software sits in, 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 in the I/O stack, if you like. So standard server, um, we can run fiber channel, iSCSI, InfiniBand uh, to that server. We have our physical cards there. VSL is our driver layer, like I was saying. Then we have uh, the ION uh, underlying software and management software. And on top of that, um, any APIs, if we so want them. So you know, it's fairly clean from that point of view uh, and a straightforward installation. Again. Yeah, this is about choice, so we're not trying to tie you in here. We're giving you a fairly open option. You have a number of uh, OEMs that you can go to in terms of procuring that hardware. Uh, largely, the type of server depends uh, really on the on the capacity requirements. Um, the CPU utilization of these of, of the of the iron is not huge at all, um, so it comes down principally to to the amount of um, PCI slots as well. And um, we have uh, HP and Supermicro that actually bundle this as a as a supported solution as well. So there are a number of ways that we can configure ION, but principally what we tend to see is, is a clustered application uh, that requires access to, to, to the ION um, appliance, and then we can mirror that data, and that can be mir mirrored through the app if we so want to. Um, if we choose to, however, we can use 40 gigabit connectivity between the two boxes and replicate that data directly using uh, the, the appliances themselves. There are other ways of, of doing this, but this is you know, the simplest and most logical way to do it. You know, use the application where you can. If not, uh, then, then ION can do this for us as well. From a, from a specs perspective, um, well, it will outperform a storage system, that's for sure. So it's, um, yeah, it's uh, over a million IOPS in a, a standard configuration, six gig a second, the limiting factor there actually being the, the fiber channel connection, uh, which we can aggregate. Uh, latency slightly higher, but, but um, you know, still down in the microseconds. So, so a card directly connected in server, you're looking at about 15 microseconds here, it comes up um, to, to, to 73 microseconds in read, but that's still an order of magnitude faster than anything you're going to get off a disk. Um, so still phenomenally fast uh, performance. Uh, choice in terms of the interface. Um, and currently, at this point, 20 terabytes um, per appliance. Slightly quicker than I've planned, but there we go. That's no bad thing necessarily.